everyone, hello and welcome to lecture 9 of Mathematics 2. This lecture is going to be about power series. Uh, so first of all, what is a power series? So power series is a sort of an infinite ger generalization of a polynomial, right? So a polynomial is, um, well, in, in X is, is basically some constant plus uh, some other constant times X plus some other constant times X squared and so on and until it stops. Well, power series, essentially the same thing, only it never stops, right? So here is um, what a power series looks like. Uh, let, let, let me give you some, some examples. So um, every time we work with the power series, we um, look at a specific power series. So this uh, C0, C1, C2, and so on, Cn, so they are some specific numbers. It's something like, I don't know, let's say um, some constant three plus, let's say, um, say four times X plus five times X square plus six times X cube and so on, right? So this is a power series or I don't know, um, let's say, um, something like this, sine zero plus sine of one times x plus sine of two times x squared plus sine of three x cubed, sine of three times x cubed, and so on. And so every one of these uh, c's is some specific number. Or if we want to write it in this um, sigma form, then we will probably write something like, so th th this one we can write as the sum of from zero to infinity of n plus three times x raised to the power n. And this series is the sum from zero to infinity uh, sine of n times x raised to the power n. Well, uh, know that not all, so it always starts with zero, right? So unlike other series that we have seen before, a power series always starts from, from zero, but um, not all coefficients as a, are, are assumed to be non-zero, right? So it is possible that some of the coefficients are just zeros. Right? So like, like it is possible that this is zero, this is zero, and this is non-zero. And then it's going to be some, some other zeros and some more zeros and so on. So something like that. I'll give you an example. For example, the sum from zero to infinity of x raised to the power n factorial, right? So this is like one zero factorial plus x raised to the power one, which is one factorial plus x squared plus x to the six plus x to the 24 and so on. Right, so this is again a power series, only, you know, uh, a lot of its coefficients are just zeros. All right, so th this is a power series. So uh, notice that power series has th this x, and this x is essentially a variable. So if x is, I don't know, 3.5, we get one series. If x is 0 0.1, we get another series. So uh, by changing, changing x, we will essentially get a different series, uh, which essentially means that our power series is a function of x. All right. Um, so here x is a variable, and essentially power series is a function of x. Right. So um, and we have coefficients of the power series. Uh, so here is a couple of, couple of examples. So notice that this series starts with one. So which essentially means that just C zero is, is zero, right? So a power series kind of always starts with zero, only it is possible that C zero is, is just, just zero. All right, um, uh, sometimes instead of looking at the power series about zero, we uh, take the power series uh, with powers of X minus A, where again, A, A is some specific number. So it could be something like, I don't know, let's say sum of sine of n from zero to infinity times x minus, I don't know, square root two raised to the power n, something like this, right? So this is my C 
n square root 2 is my um, my a and this, this is like a function of x also here is um, uh, here are some more examples of this okay um, now how can we work with a power series well um, we're going to begin with uh, thinking of the geometric series as a power series, right? So if you if you think of this expression, and you will notice that this is nothing else but the geometric series. Right? And um, as we have already seen in the previous lecture, we know that the geometric series converges um, whenever absolute value of the common ratio and the common ratio here is just x is less than one and diverges um, if the absolute value of the common ratio is more is bigger than or equal to one right so it diverges if absolute value of x is bigger than or equal to one and moreover when it converges we know that it converges to one over one minus x right so this is the sum of the power series so it means that our, our geometric series um, is essentially a representation of the function 1 minus 1 over x as the sum of this infinite series. So 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on. But this representation only works if absolute value of x is less than 1 because it only works when the power series converges. If the power series diverges, then th there is no such representation. Um, now, notice that essentially the set of values of x where the power for which the power series converges is the domain of our function. So generally speaking, if we have a function represented by a power series, then its domain is the set of all values of x for which the power series converges. All right, so this is our geometric series, and we know um, how to work with it. Right, so this is the same as I already wrote. So absolute value of x should be less than one. Now, um, power series are very often used in approximation, uh, like super simple example. So uh, when you, when you write sine x, well, if you want to compute a sign of something on your computer or on your calculator, right? So how does the computer compute sine of x? So how does the computer compute, the, for example, sine of, I don't know, three radians? How does it know uh, what the output should be? Well, and the computer only, essentially only does uh, multiplication, uh, addition, and addition. So the rest of the operations are kind of expressed via addition and multiplication. And they, this is what power series actually does. So in order to, to compute sine x via just addition and multiplication, we represent a sine x via a power series. And it actually, it is in fact, as we will see later today, the sum from zero to infinity of uh, x raised to the power two n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 factorial times minus 1 to the power n. And so notice that here x is raised to the power 2n plus 1 rather than to the power n. But it doesn't mean that it's not a power series. So it means that just some coefficients are 0. So it is x minus x cube. So even terms are missing over 3 factorial plus, well, 6 is 3 factorial. 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial and so on. And, and basically, if we represent sine x with a finite uh, portion of the, this sum, it allows us to calculate sine x with any um, prescribed precision. So if we want, say, to, to get sine x with 10 decimal places, um, it's not very hard to, to figure out how many terms of the power series we need to take to so that, that the output is going to be equal to the sine x, well, with uh, an error in, in the 10th decimal term. 
right? So um, how does it work? So here is a, a very simple example, right? So if we use the first four terms of the power series to estimate this, right? So it means that uh, how do we estimate this? So one divided by 0 0.99 should really be one divided by one minus something. And what should uh, that something be? Uh, it should be uh, 0 0.01, right? <laughs> and this is really 1 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.01 squared plus 0 0.01 cubed plus 0 0.01 to the 4 plus and so on. Well, if the question is to find the, the, the first four terms of the power series to estimate this, then basically what we do, we take the first, the, the first four terms and replace, remove the remainder, and then write that this approximately equals. Right? Well, and by the same logic, 1 over 1.1, this is 1 divided by 1 minus negative point 0.1, right? So this should be 1 minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 squared minus 0 0.1 cubed. Because now x is minus 0 0.1. <laughs> All right. Uh, then we can, we can of course calculate it. So here is the answer. Here is also the answer. Um, but the what is important here is the the basic idea. Of course, when it is just one over one minus x, we can just directly divide, uh, you know, two two numbers. So it's not really very interesting. But if uh, you want to compute something like e to the x or something something else, then sometimes the power series is is very convenient. It, not all the time. So sometimes other methods I, I used, but power series is, is one of them. All right, uh, so how can we use uh, the familiar power series for one over one minus x to obtain power series for other functions, right? Um, basically, in part A, so one over one plus x cubed, right? So we, we, we know the power series of one, for one divided by one minus x. Right, so what we really want to see here is one divided by one minus something, but then to 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 make it into this this correct form, I should write one minus negative x cubed, right? Okay, and then uh, this negative x cubed is kind of beca becomes our new x. This is going to be one minus x cubed. Well, minus minus x cubed squared sorry uh, okay let, let me write it kind of in with more detail so one plus minus x cube plus minus x cube squared plus minus x cube cubed and so on right okay this is really one minus x cube plus x to the six minus x to the nine and so on so the signs are alternating and we we, we only have uh, terms with powers divisible by three right so if, if you want to to rewrite it um with a summation sign then, then you will get the sum from zero to infinity of negative one raised to the power n so that the sum are alternating and x raised to the power three n right so because only uh, terms with powers divisible by three are present here. Okay, so th th this is how we, we can do uh, part A. Part B, um, so one over two minus X. So basically because of the same logic, what? so here we have one divided by two minus something, and we want to have one minus something in the denominator, right? So We've got to figure to to take out the, the two so it should be like one half times one over one minus um and now in order to make it work i should write x over two right so because now two times x minus two is this x so it, it worked 
Okay, so one half. And now my x over two is like the new x. So this is one half times one um, plus x over two plus x over two squared plus x over two cube and so on. So this is the power series for this function uh, for part B. And if you want to rewrite it using the summation, uh, sign then you will get the sum from zero to infinity one half um, and i guess just x over two raised to the power n no, sorry raised to the power n all right so hope this clear yeah uh the first power series so notice that um the power series for 1 over 1 minus x works when x is the absolute value of x is less than 1, right? So the first of the, these, these two series in part A works when absolute value of x cubed is less than 1, right? So because we replaced x with x cubed essentially. But this is the, the same thing. So absolute value of x cubed is less than 1 if and only the absolute value of x itself is less than 1. And in part B, the power series works if absolute value of x over 2 is less than 1, which means that x itself should be less than 2. Well, absolute value of x itself should be less than, than 2. All right. Um, now, um, if you fix the value of x, then a power series is going to be just like a familiar series, right? And to figure out wh whether it converges or diverges, you, you can apply tests that you learned in the previous two lectures. Um, so it converges for some values of x and diverges for some other values of x. Usually this is the case. Um, so values of x for which it converges, um, they essentially they, they form the domain um, of the function represented by the power series. All right? So this is our function f and well it, it has a domain and to find the domain you need to figure out for every value of x whether the power series converges or diverges all right so this is the end of the first part of the lecture